Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another Super Tease video. And in this one, we are going to be giving a PvP review of the new hero talents, the Oracle Priest. Now, Discipline Priest is my favorite favorite specialization and this is a set of hero talents available to it and it is very important to me that these hero talents make me excited for this spec and don't maybe ruin the spec so i'm going to be looking at it through the lens of a pvp -er. i've gotten rank one multiple times now on this specialization i was top three just today um, and i'm looking to push into the number one spot as soon as possible so i i really like disc i think that it is super fun um, although maybe it's not the most competitive healer i'm trying to still make it work and i'm having a blast with it so let's get started here we got premonition so premonition used to be an honor talent for pvp that replaced shadow or death or at least the mechanic to break cc so reusing that name but it looks like it's a one minute cooldown that's going to replace power infusion this thing had better be amazing because replacing power infusion is a big deal divine the future and gain access to a spell that gives you an advantage against your fate solace increases your target's healing received by 25 percent for 10 seconds and insight increases your target's magic damage dealt by 10 percent for 10 seconds and glory which is going to increase your target's physical damage dealt by 10 percent so it's kind of in the same archetype as blessing of summer i think that my understanding has as it's been explained to me is that this is going to work like twisted fate in league of legends where you pick a card and then it goes above his head and then you lock it in on which one you want whether it's mana return a stun or i think extra damage or aoe or something like that i haven't played twisted fate in a long time now the the main problem with that mechanic is in pvp at least is how much, you know, I think it's around 12 seconds you're going to get to lock in the buff that you want to get. But if you get CC'd, right? So, like, you activate this, and right as it swaps to the one that you want to activate, and then you get CC'd, and then it's like, oh, God, you're going to have to wait. Uh, I think this ability is off global cooldown. It's absolutely going to have to be if it's going to work, um, because otherwise, you know, you're going to be managing emergency abilities in between it. Main problem I see for it right now is the glory buff. Um, physical damage dealt by 10%. There are very few and far between classes that actually do raw physical damage and in some cases uh, is it going to be certain that power infusion wouldn't just be more dps you know 20 percent haste um i it's my understanding that this is going to work with the twin priestess which gives you the same buff and i think it's going to give you insight as disc no matter what which is just going to be more damage output which ultimately is fine um it's going to be like another emergency cooldown it feels very similar to dark archangel in a lot of sense but it's kind of just like a single target or just you and your ally the only advantages i could really see of the physical damage increase is that if you're playing with a class that does physical damage like a feral druid i wonder how it's going to work with bm hunters is it going to buff the pets because i feel like that could be a problem as well um but if you're playing like a feral druid and they're all physical damage you could give them premonition and if a mage spell steals it it's not as big of a deal because they're getting physical damage increase as opposed to if they spell steal haste they're getting a big benefit now if they cast it on you they're going to get 10 percent magic buff and that's going to be uh, you know pretty good for them um I think it's a lot harder to use. I think it's cool that they're trying to incorporate like mechanics from other games like like Twisted Fate and that like, cycling through buffs idea could be cool and unique. I'm just worried that these buffs aren't going to measure up to the actual power of just the original power infusion. So let's see what, what else is going to go along to maybe make this desirable. Uh, preventative measures increases the damage absorbed by powered shield by 10% and healing done by prayer of mending by 10%. I personally hate playing prayer of mending as disc. I feel like you already don't really have a lot of globals between trying to keep all of your purge the wickets up and keep your atonements on targets and trying to do damage at the same time as mitigating emergency healing and timing your cooldowns. And it feels like a really unnecessary extra key binding that doesn't play play into the, like doing damage atonement play style so i personally don't like prayer of ending um so i'm already kind of leaning away from this talent tree initially because the mechanics of switching through these buffs in pvp is likely going to be very difficult um and yeah i think it's just power infusion by itself baseline might even be better than some of these passives but let's keep going deeper assured safety powered shield applies one stack of prayer amending to your target okay so automatically getting a prayer amending but it's only one charge so it wouldn't bounce around um and then prayer of mending casts also apply powered shield to your target at 20 percent effectiveness does that mean that it's going to apply atonement because i mean having another way to apply atonement wouldn't be that bad and does that mean 
just the it's just the cast right it wouldn't be the bounces i mean the bounces applying to Toman would be crazy good that would make me excited to press pair of many but i'm imagining that's going to be way too powerful um so it's probably just you know one gets a little bit of an increase to the other not a big fan so far for this uh grand reveal when your power word shield is fully absorbed or your prayer of mending heals gain a stack of grand reveal at 150 stacks gain an additional charge of premonition I don't know if you're ever going to get that in PvP. 150 seconds, unless you're actually playing Prayer of Mending. With, I mean, you would have to play Prayer of Mending with this talent tree, with this thing locked in, I think, for it to make any sense to get multiple premonitions, which could be pretty good. I mean, amping up the damage of your allies' magic damage by 10% um, could be really good. You could also use the Solace for healing received if you're playing with some hybrid DPS in an emergency situation. They could, like, Hellstone with it and they get even bigger heal or something. That could be cool. But it seems to me that this is, like, a heavy influence on um, Prayer of Mending. And that's just a build that I don't like. So if this is the direction of the talent tree, it's probably going to be one that at least I'm avoiding for PvP. Uh, preemptive Care increases the duration of Atonement by one second, which is nice, and increases the duration of Renew by three seconds, which which is just nice passive flat out value. Um, I think it's pretty similar to what maybe even the current set bonus is, the, four, the two piece bonus. It's like smite extends your atonement, but this is just flat out. You get a little bit longer atonement. Uh, choose one prompt deliverance. Reduce the cooldown of purify by two seconds. That is broken. You can run double purify. So with a two second reduction, I think it's a six second cooldown. So you can double dispel on a six second cooldown. That is, you know, in some situations that could actually be mandatory. Um, I'm thinking against classes like Elemental Shamans, Flame Shocks, or Immolates from Adestro Lock, or Polymorphs or Crowd Control from Mages. So now I'm a bit worried that this is like auto locking me into this build, at least in those situations. Um, and what's what's funny enough is sometimes the situation is Paramendi is not like really the best. You want Paramendi against Dots, which against the Ellie Warlock would be true, but against the Mages, it's probably not so much. Uh, Divine Feathers, I hate anything to do with this. I just self-cast this ability. So what is this going to be? When an ally walks through your Angelic Feather, you are also granted 100% of its effect. Okay, so now I'm just going to make a macro to cast at player instead of cast at myself, and then we just both get a Feather. Most of the time, the problem is that the movement speed of the person that you give this to is heavily stared to the point where this sprinting effect doesn't really even matter. Um, so, I mean, I don't... I mean, it could be cool for just, like, laying feathers around for people to run through and try and get a sprint. Um, but I don't think, in, again, in PvE, like, it's going to be better than the... Um, the wind totem that they have for shamans where everybody gets a sprint or a stampeding roar right it's a, it's way more single target it's going to be less valuable to me it's the dispel cooldown that's the real value from this one uh for this one perfect vision reduces the cooldown of premonition by 10 seconds versatile d divinations premonition can now trigger the brilliance and urgency effects brilliance will restore five percent of your target's maximum mana and urgency increases your target's haste by 12 percent Okay, so you have to choose one or the other. So you're probably going to go for the bottom one because 10 seconds off is not a big deal, I don't think. Um, being able to get 5% of your mana back, does would that be included with when you cast it on the ally, then you get you know the 10% the damage increase and you'd also get the 5% mana because Discs really struggles with mana. So like now I'm thinking I have to take this because it can give me mana regen and it's going to give you the haste benefit anyways. You know, you're getting over 50% of baseline, you know, power infusions haste. You would have to go versatile divinations, I would think, um, to offset the balance of losing just baseline power infusion. Um, and then, you know, getting over half of it back and then also getting some mana restored. This seems very similar to the masks from Shadowlands. I think there was one that gave you mana back as well from that expansion. For the side over here, choose Waste No Time. Premonition causes your next power word Radiance, Heal, or Prayer of Mending to be instant cast and cost 15% less mana. Now, you already have an Honor Talent that in makes your power word Radiance big baseline instant cast. Um, the mana off is like, it's nice, but you're only pressing this every minute. And then maybe if you get to 150 stacks one time in a game, you can't really maybe survive off of only getting one charge of it being instant. Uh... I guess it also makes prayer of mending, but it seems so pointless to use it on prayer of mending relative to, you know, radiance. Now, the second choice for this is miraculous recovery, reduces the cooldown of power with life by three seconds. Now, that is really powerful and allows it to be usable in targets by 50% health. You have to take that. That powered life, oh my god, it is so broken when you actually get to use it, but you have to wait until they're usually very dangerously low. 
So in PvP, you just run the Honor Town for the Instant Radiances. You would not even look at Waste No Time. You'd waste no time with Waste No Time. And Miraculous Recovery is going to be... I mean, this is now looking like a mandatory PvP locked-in one because you spend a lot of time with your allies below 50% health, getting it on a lower cooldown. Okay, that's really powerful effect. So far, that's the most powerful one. It's just the random one on the side. Uh, foreseen circumstances pain suppression reduces damage taken by an additional 10 percent and guardian spirit lasts an additional two seconds just some quality of life here i've actually noticed that pain suppression isn't actually very effective at least at the moment in dragonflight assuming that damage pacing is even close to the same so 10 percent there is that that's just solid value um choose one divine providence increases the duration of premonition effects premonitions effects by two seconds uh and fate bender premonitions effect is increased by 30 percent if the divine spell is different than the previous premonition so if you if you've got like a melee player on your team or a caster or you're rotating between healing increase to cast a damage increase you could line this up for a really big one shot you you might have to wait a bit i mean 30 percent of 10% is three, I'm assuming. So it'd be like 13. It's not even that big of a deal. I mean, having it last longer with it giving 12% haste, assuming that it applies to urgency. I don't know if it will apply to urgency or not in brilliance. Um, it's probably not going to, but still getting an extra two seconds of this seems better um, in most cases. I mean, three an extra 3% is not that big of a deal. It's not stupendous. And then the bottom one, Clairvoyance. Premonition has a low chance to grant you Clairvoyance. Clairvoyance grants your target and two nearby allies all the effects of Premonition at 100% effectiveness. It's roll the bones. So you're going to be able to roll the bones and just get all of the buffs on everybody on your team. There's a huge RNG element there. Which is probably fine, again, in a raiding environment. We get lots of targets and those buffs are randomly going out on people. Maybe it's a cool moment. It's probably a moment that they really don't even notice. It'd be like a proc trinket effect or something happening. Um, I could see PvEers getting mad about this because then it's like you can't control where the damage boosts are going. So if somebody's trying to parse and they're trying to like funnel all the buffs into themselves and now they can't because it's out of their control, getting really tilted by this. Um, in PvP... You're just going to feel bad when it doesn't happen. And then if you're fighting against another priest and they happen to be rolling clairvoyance a bunch of times and then you're not rolling clairvoyance and you just feel like you're losing out on throughput because, I mean, you lose out on 25% healing effectiveness on, you know, you and your target. I'm not a big fan of that. So far, the, the biggest selling points for this in terms of viability for PvP are the powered life is usable below 50%. That's the strongest thing available on this entire tree. And then the next one would probably be the pain suppression damage reduction. And then the extra 12% haste and the mana return. These these three here, but it's going to lock you into a prayer of mending playstyle. So if you don't want that extra key bind or you don't really like prayer of mending, like me personally at least, in PvP, and the feathers is kind of just not going to work. I guess the two, two, two seconds off of Dispel is also going to be really powerful in PvP situationally. So situationally where you need to run double Dispel, this build is going to be really good, but it's going to lock you into playing some... some um, prayer of mending and i'm wondering if that's how their approach for this if they want to use the hero talents as a way of like incentivizing certain baseline talents more than others and like the hero talents tree will affect completely different spells so that way you know you're gonna have more representation of the overall talent it's possible there are definitely some big wins in here for pvp i'm just a bit worried about the overall effectiveness maybe it's not maybe it'll be fine i don't i just don't really like having to be forced into a prayer of mending build i feel like it generally just feels like you're juggling too many globals and not enough into actually the role of how disc you know plays effectively with just doing raw damage to heal um but it, i think it would be a functional talent i think having these three effects would likely make it pretty powerful for this one um but yeah i'm worried about the, the locking in twisted fate mechanic this is just my initial reception to it you know initial feedback to it let me know what you think of this talent tree does it seem exciting to you in the comments down below uh, if you like this type of video make sure to smash that subscribe button your support is greatly appreciated and other than that thank you very much for tuning in and i will see you in the next one